the AIT. Welcome to Democracy Today. I am Ijooma Osamu. On the program tonight, our focus will be on the state of the nation and legislative interventions. The special assistant to President Mohamed Buhari on, on social media, Loretta Onoche, on Monday hinted uh, on her Twitter handle that the president will be addressing a joint session of the National Assembly. And this decision is coming following deliberations on the floor of the Green Chamber after the killing of about 43 farmers in Bono State. The House adopted a resolution that the president must come before the chamber to speak on issues of insecurity. This shall form part of our discussion tonight on the program as we take a look at state of the Nigerian state and legislative intervention. We shall be speaking with the Senate spokesman, Senator Bashiru Ajibola, on this issue. And that's the question we shall be taking on the program tonight. And joining me in the studio is the uh, Senate spokesman, Senator Bashiru Ajibola. Thank you very much yeah, uh, good evening. for coming on the show. Uh, let's begin with um, the Senate's intervention in issues that relate to uh, governance in Nigeria, year 2020. Yeah, there have been a very, uh, this year, 2020, I would say is a very momentous year, not only for Nigeria, but for uh, the whole, I mean, of the world. And uh, uh, starting uh, to kick uh, the process in, in 2020, uh, was the promise of the Ninth uh, National Assembly that uh, we mm -hmm. want to have a predictable uh, budget circle in Nigeria. So the year 2020 started with a budget of January to uh, uh, December and uh, the National Assembly being able to work to ensure that uh, we're able to revert back a bit to January, December circle. And of course, the finance bill that will support uh, the uh, Appropriation Act 2020 was also worked I mean, upon by the National Assembly ahead of the New Year 2020. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the uh, lingering issues has always been how do we finance the uh, budget. Uh, there is a law, the Deep Offshore and the Profit Sharing uh, Contract uh, Law, which had been due for review for about 15 years. The Ninth National Assembly also took effort to ensure that we're able to pass that bill with in a period of less than two weeks, and this has made it I mean, possible for us to realize what is due to Nigeria from all revenue, particularly in the deep, I mean, offshore. So the uh, year 2020, I would say, uh, started off on uh, a very good, uh, I mean, note. And uh, uh, but of course, with the global pande uh, pandemic, pandemic, in uh, uh, particularly has affected us with the lockdown from March in uh, Nigeria, the parameters upon which the budget was predicated in terms of the, uh, uh, of the, of the, of the, of the cost of a barrel of oil, I mean, change. The problem of being able to get uh, funding uh, in the uh, uh, international community to finance the deficit aspect of the budget also became a problem. Then the drastic, I mean, uh, are variable in terms of uh, even the uh, earning value of uh, a Naira to foreign currency became issue. So this necessitated the National Assembly to immediately had to amend the Appropriation Act of 2020. And of course, we had to also amend the Finance Act 2020. And of course, we also had to make some adjustment into the medium term expenditure framework to ensure that the economic parameters as has been changed by the global pandemic, which has exacerbated problem for economy because of the drop international uh, oil price. You could see that at those period of time, uh, even shale oil in the United States was even being sold for a dollar. Then we have uh, a Nigerian situation whereby the cost of crude then was said to be about $28 per barrel and price of crude in the international market fell I mean, to below uh, about, about $9, $15. And of course, this had to be looked into and promptly the National Assembly had to intervene to make necessary appropriation, to make necessary am amendment to the MTF and necessary am amendment to the Finance Act. And this uh, is an aspect that we have to work upon. Of course, the pandemic also threw up its own challenge in terms of adequate legislative I mean, framework to attend to the, I mean, the pandemic. Even the name of the virus is said to be a novel mm. I mean, virus. The existing law was the Quarantine Act of 1929. So they had to work to make I mean, regulation and how to, we had to interface with the necessary agencies like the NCDC, the Ministry of Health and all other stakeholders to ensure that enabling framework is made to make fund available to also make necessary I mean, legislative intervention to ensure that the country is able to respond to the pandemic. These are part of the areas by which I mean, the national legislature had made intervention 
particularly in life with the challenge of 2020. Now, when you talk about challenge of 2020, aside the, uh, the big blow dealt uh, by the novel virus that you also spoke about, uh, the coronavirus on our economy, there is also this issue of security. And leading to that is uh, the aspect of uh, the young Nigerians who took to the streets. Uh, and that also dealt a big blow too on the Nigerian economy and the way of life of the people. Now, looking at um, the National Assembly, which happens to be one of the arm of government, when you look at um, government generally in the country, what did the uh, National Assembly do when these all problems came? How did they intervene in this? I, I would take uh, issues of uh, the problem of insecurity on one hand. Mm. I also take the issue of, I mean, the response on the NSAS also on the other hand, so that it can be brought out in very clear perspective. On the issue of insecurity, this has been a perennial challenge of our country even before the present administration. But upon the uh, assumption of the ninth I mean, assembly uh, where I serve, uh, there has been a concern as to how to address problem of insecurity. One of the things that the National Assembly had done, particularly the Senate, was to set up a stakeholder I mean, summit on security. And that came up with far-reaching recommendations which had been passed on to the executive and some of them had been incorporated into the amendment of the police act you will know that since that is about 1945 or thereabout the police act which is the i mean law regulating policing in nigeria had not been amended but for the first time during this night assembly we were able to am amend that and part of the highlight of that amendment is to focus on the issue of constabulary police, the issue of community policing, and the issue of I mean, decentralization of operation of the Nigerian I mean, police. And uh, we believe that this, when implemented, because the challenge you now have with that problem is that as at the time that the police act was passed, it was around the same period that the problem of the NSAS actually occurred. So there has not been a gestation period for the implementation of that very important legislation. Then one of the things that the National Assembly has also done is to look at even the structure of the Nigerian police. And we have suggested that they need to have zonal policing in the area that they will be uh, operationally and budgetarily have the control. A situation whereby you have a unitary, I mean, system of uh, policing in the federal and at the general society with the National Assembly thought that would not, I mean, augur well for effective policing uh, of, the, of the country. And of course, we have also engaged with the Inspector of Police in plenary on the effort being uh, done in the area of security, uh, particularly in the area of engaging the community. What we believe as representative of the people is that we need to engage the people at the community level, at the local level in the act of policing. And I think these are part of the effort. But of course, there are bigger issues beyond even policing at the level of crimes and the protection of life and property. And that is that the country is uh, in a form of insurgency by the Boko Haram, which was inherited by the present administration. And you also have the problem of banditry. At this level, the Affairs Committee of the National Assembly on Armed Forces, on uh, our Navy, on the Air Force and on intelligence and defense and interface with the relevant stakeholder and being able to know what are their challenges. Some of these have been incorporated in the 2020 I mean, appropriation in terms of uh, getting them to be more prepared in terms of operation. I am a member of the Air Force uh, Committee. We have gone to critical facilities uh, to be able to ensure that these facilities are run very well and are able and adapted to be able to tackle the problem of insurgency and banditry. Okay, then then the on the question of the on the NSAS, yes. see, uh, the is legitimate right of every citizen to protest when you find out that there are certain things uh, that is not well in your society. So it's a legitimate right for Nigerians, Nigerian youth, to come forward and make protests. But in this, I mean, regard, I must say with all sense of responsibility that the five demands put forward by the NSAS were promptly attended to not only by the National Assembly passing the resolution, but by the executive acceding too. But as it were, it uh, sounds to look into critically whether even the organizers of the NSAS were really genuine about the five uh, uh, demands they made. Because having acceded to those demands, you give a gestation period for those demands to be implemented. But the next thing you now hear is about people calling for change of government, calling for disbursement of National Assembly, and so on and so forth. If you are talking of regime change, in a democratic society, the way you change a regime is to go to the poll, 
conduct an election and democratically remove that government. And that is, I mean, what is recognized? The other ways are illegitimate means, and that is by way of organizing insurrection, organizing insurgency, or attempting to organize a coup d'etat. So for me, the answers legitimate to the extent is making a demand on legitimate government. Illegitimate that certain individuals who are politically motivated decided to want to use him as a means of regime change. That would be Robert, unacceptable, Senator, undemocratic, and is illegal. Senator, when they started this protest, they didn't come for regime change. They went for uh, war against uh, police brutality, and later they found out that bad governance is also one of the things that, because they didn't trust the, the government. I, I, ask, I ask you a question. The, is the it problem becomes... becomes what, 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 what about, you don't trust a government, you made a demand, and within 48 hours, the government acceded to your demand. What kind of trust? That means that these, those people that did not trust the government, then they are not trustworthy. If you want to make a protest, you said, this is the parameter of my protest. One, two, three, four, five. And the one, two, three, four, five was acceded to. Then you now say, no, I'm now talking of regime change. Regime change. The way to do regime change. I don't know what I that of regime yes, yes, so change. We had, we, had, we had several of them, people, people who are known mm -hmm. member for position, now emergency, they become emergency uh, activists. People known, people who canvass for a, a candidate that was rejected at the poll in 2019. Suddenly in 2020, they became uh, uh, activists. They, they begin to use the answers for their own autonomy. motive. That may be, well, that the original initiator in, of the yes. answers were legitimate, they were concerned about the country, but as you see, and the turnout of events showed that it became bastardized, it became uh, a process by which some people with ulterior motive who have political, I mean, undertone, decided to hijack, I mean, the process. And that what led to the breakdown of law and order. Then how do you even talk of a project, a process that does not have leadership? Any process that does not have leadership in the history of the world only leads to anarchy. Because at the end of the day, even when you are going to war, there must be legitimate authority that you can ultimately dialogue with. But do you think the government handled this issue properly? If you're saying that you, your fears uh, were seen, were people taking advantage of the protest and trying to call for government change? You think the government is uh, taking a good maybe position the way, maybe by if the government arresting want to, maybe if as the well government, as uh, If the government want to there. do it very well, maybe the government should just have resigned. If that is what you are asking. No, I'm but just saying, saying I, I need you to... There must, be, there must be dialogue. Even at the National Assembly, the protesters, the National Assembly, the National Assembly leadership mandated me to talk to them. They refused to listen to me. They I were shouting at me and they were echoing at me. I was a student activist. I graduated after 12 years of admission. I was expelled from two universities based on activism, not cultism, not examen uh, practices. So some of us have committed as youths to the development of democracy, development and advance of our society. When we were in student movement and as young activists, we have leadership. In the UAD, Olisa Agwakoba was our leader. In the CLO, we have Ayobe, we have uh, uh, our leadership. So you cannot have a process legitimate to change the society without a leadership. The only way you can lead it to is anarchism. You can read a book by a Russian writer, they call it Portrait, Portrait. of Anarchism. Yeah, I know, I've any, seen that. any protest that does not have an agenda, does not have leadership, and does not have a framework for even implementing what you get. Assuming you even talk of regime change, you, you say you don't have leaders, who are we going to hand over government to? That's to tell you that maybe they weren't, they weren't even coming out for it regime change. That, that means that they are not serious. Okay, let's, uh, let's find out for you. Are you worried that these young Nigerians may take to the streets again? I'm not one, worried. Because one, not... Econ the economy is quite not too friendly. We understand why the economy is like this. You started with the mm -hmm. issue of... Uh, uh, the coronavirus, which came, dealt a, dip, a big blow on our economy. And number two, the standard of living, it's, it's, it's harsh. Are you are worried that these young Nigerians may take to the street again? Uh, is it the question of people taking to the street should not be a problem for any democratic government. It's also part of what you use as barometer as to acceptability and credibility of government. It is when such process became bastardized like the end game of the last answers, that it becomes worrisome when properties and life of individuals who are not even collected, connected to the government, I mean, came into jeopardy. I know a friend who planted uh, a cucumber, and by the time answers came, he could not market cucumber. The only investment he had went down. How has that got to do with the National Assembly? Or, so we, we, I believe that there will be framework to ventilate grievances, to agitate, for the right of the people. Now, to the economy, I must tell you that not only the Nigerian economy, but the global economy is in serious crisis. Mm. Even the United States of America 
even China, they had this challenge, which, I mean, of course, uh, is uh, not really attributable to human cause. None of us, no, nobody will predict. Even in December, when we just heard of the rumor of a uh, story of uh, Wuhan, mm. nobody thought it would be this uh, devastating. But what I know is that the present I mean, government is alive to responsibility of trying to push the effect of the challenge of the economy. For instance, the present 2021 budget being worked up had a allocation of 421 billion for social intervention I mean, project. The empower had been increased to now accommodate 1 million people from the initial 500,000. There's also the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, intervention I mean, fund to be able to take care of SME, registration of new businesses, and also to be able to assist with payroll for some of these okay. enterprises to be done. So the government is alive to its responsibility to also I mean, make I mean, certain I mean, programs. And I hope that the handlers of information, particularly for the federal government, will be able to bring out uh, these I mean, programs. They will be able to sensitize people that the government is not uh, uh, sleeping or resting on us to ensure that we address this economy. But I know as a politician that this is a challenging period for our people. The economy uh, is not, I mean, doing well, but due to many factors beyond, I mean, uh, the capacity, capability of the present administration. But as a government, because we swore to the constitution to defend our people in terms of their welfare and security, we must continue to work and synergize and come up with policies and programs to stimulate and develop the economy. And that is why the new finance bill 2021, which has passed second reading at the Senate, we are working on ensuring that the, those people whose home take home pay cannot even take them home are insulated from taxation. And a lot of uh, stimulus is being put in the finance bill to ensure that small businesses I mean, thrive and then we'll be able to possibly get more people into employment. But what we need to do in Nigeria is that we need to concentrate on productivity, we need to gravely employ our people, we need to look at education and ensure that vocational I mean, training becomes core value of our people so that people can use their hand to work the area of relying on office i mean work that does not really and as productivity i mean is gone in the world all right so now let's quickly go to the trendy nation on monday the president muhammad Buhari's handler the social media handler i saw it i also saw some of uh, his uh, media aid put up a, a notice that the president will be addressing the joint session of the National Assembly on Thursday. And Nigerians are hoping that tomorrow the president will address joint session on the issue of security. Because after the killing of um, farmers in Bono State over last weekend, it, it, it's, it, it, it's not a story anybody is happy with. And uh, what the members of the Green Chamber are asking is that the president should come, talk to Nigerians on how this can be solved. So what will be the question that some of you will ask the president if he happens to come tomorrow? I'm not in the green chamber. I'm in the red you, chamber. Yeah, it's a the joint red, session. The chamber, it's the a joint session. The red chamber did not call because we must put everything in proper That's perspective. That's true. That's why I said the red the chamber, chamber did not call for the president to come and address us. No. We pass our resolutions and our resolution, based on motion moved by uh, my leader, uh, uh, Senator Kashim Setima from Bornu, was to the effect that there is a need to urgently address the problem of insecurity. We also reiterate re our earlier call for the sack of the security chief so that possibly new ideas, new energy can be brought to the leadership of the armed forces and security, I mean, the operative. And of course, we also uh, adopted some of the ideas brought up by Governor Sulum of Bonu. So our resolutions are very clear. Yes. But you know, we operate a bicameral legislature. Yes. The fact that a, a motion is carried at the Senate does not mean it will be, it will, it will be carried at the uh, Green, Green Chamber. Chamber. So the idea of inviting the president was that of the Green Chamber. So I wouldn't, I mean, as of today, I ask, I mean, from the National Assembly, uh, the, from, the, from the Senate, and the Senate does not have any notification at all that the, the president is coming to address a joint session. Ideally, when there will be a joint session, even on the other paper of today, that will be there in notification that at social time, and you know, if there will be a joint session, we usually add same at the chamber of the House of Rep. So there will be an arrangement for when we are going to proceed from our chamber to that. So as I'm speaking now, to the best of my knowledge, uh, there is uh, no such thing. Uh, as at the time I was coming, I envisage that this question may come up. Uh, unfortunately, the President of the Senate is in another very crucial meeting, and he said uh, we will speak. So as of now, there is no communication 
that the national the, that the senate which i am to speak for is expecting the president tomorrow all right before i let you go let's uh, quickly look at 2021 because 2020 is already gone and uh, from the explanation that you have given uh, the senate happens to have intervened in so many uh issues that borders on governance as well as the economy in nigeria in the year 2020 in the face of some of the daunting uh, challenges that the country faced 2021 let's say uh, uh, take a look at what you think uh, the Senate will also do ahead of 2021. Of course, like, uh, we have uh, committed ourselves to reversing uh, the ugly trend of having a regular budget circle. We are still working. And possibly by tomorrow, the, the, the Senate will pass the 2021 budget ahead so that the President can assent to it before January 1, 2021. The same thing with the finance bill. I told you it as part of the second reading. It's already at the committee and the stage. Then the medium-term expenditure framework was given expeditious consideration by the Senate because that will be on the basis of with the Appropriation Act I and mean, it will be based. But beyond this, we are working and committed, possibly by the first quarter of next year, to finalize work on the petroleum industry bill. This bill has been very crucial. It has met with a lot of challenges since 2006, and the present leadership of the Senate and, and, the, and the House of Rail were committed to ensure that its expenditure package. Secondly, the issue of constitutional I mean, reform. Uh, even as of today, the Constitutional Review Committee of the Senate met, and we are working on the key I mean, baseline document already on ground on restructuring and the amendment of constitution. We are working on the basis of Governor Rufai shared committee of the APC. We are working on the report of the uh, CONFAB of 1994. We are also looking historically as to what has happened to the earlier efforts to amend a constitution and why those efforts are not succeeded. And of course, as I'm speaking now, there are several bills already presented in the Ninth Assembly on amendment of constitution. A subcommittee has also been set up to look into that so that we can benefit from this uh, for our effort in having a a robust engagement upon which will engage the people at solar level and possibly at the state level as resource may permit. Then the Electoral Act is also key to us. We want a situation whereby issues related to Electoral Act, whatever reform we want to do to ensure that the vote of the people can't is, 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 is resolved in 2021 so that the year, penultimate year to an election is not a good year to begin to resolve I mean, such uh, issues. So those are the I mean, key areas we are looking, of, uh, looking, uh, looking for us to. And of course, we have also made uh, some advancement in making some law that will impact in the, on the business climate of Nigeria. Like, for instance, the Company Alala Matter yeah, Act, matter, the Bank and other financial institution act has also been done. We have also passed a bill liberalizing the railway system in Nigeria to allow for private uh, operators with a view to ensuring that issue of transportation is also uh, been tackled. Okay. All right. You're a member of the APC and a very strong one at that. So I will have to ask this question. The decision of the neck of your party on Wednesday. What I don't do know you why think? you say I'm a strong <laughs> member of uh, no, As a senator, but you I are an important member of APC. I, you are a serving senator. Yes, I'm a serving senator, but uh, I will, maybe I will, I, will, I will amuse myself to say I'm a very strong uh, member. I'm a young member of the, of the party and I, of course, I thank the party for uh, considering me fit to take the, uh, the ticket of the party for APC. I would say that uh, our party is in the process of further rejuvenation, getting ready particularly to face the challenge of our leadership and governance and ensuring that we have a vibrant party that lives be, uh, beyond the tenure of our leader, uh, President Mamadou Bali. So I believe that uh, by the time the membership registration revalidation is over, by the time new leadership emerge from the world, from the polling unit up to national level, we have uh, the party. Or the only fear I have is that we don't want Nigeria to become a one-party state. But it appears that with our preparedness, with our uh, commitment to rebuilding the party, it may well be that uh, what you only need to win an election is to get the ticket of the APC. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. We'll be speaking with the Senate spokesperson, Senator Bashiru Ajibola, here, uh, telling Nigerians the intervention method the Senate has empl uh, employed in the year 2020, as well as uh, what should be expected the first quarter 
of 2021. Well, I would like to say thank you again You're for welcome. coming on the show. Well, stay with us. We'll, we'll go straight to uh, Imo State. But at this moment, there are some group of persons who uh, are saying that um, there is hope for Nigeria in 2021. And uh, if I may, let me just quickly take a look at their names. Okay. Uh, it is the National Democratic Man.